If you're looking to print your work in one of the most impressive ways that you possibly can, you're in the right place. I'm landscape photographer Austin James Jackson, and in this video, I'm going to be covering absolutely everything that you need to know in order to create an epic triptych print of your photos. Now, if you didn't already know, a triptych is a type of print where one photo typically is split into three different sections. This can be done on any medium you like. Now, there are numerous benefits to printing your photo as a triptych. First off, it allows you to print your photos larger than you normally would when you're just printing an image onto one piece. Because with one piece, you're typically limited to 40 by 60 on metal or 48 by 96 on canvas or acrylic. If you shoot in the standard two to three ratio that most photographers use, 72 inches is the widest width that you can have printed at Artbeat. Now, if you get a triptych, you can combine three of the largest size prints to make an even larger image. Now, for an image with a one to two ratio, you could combine three 48 by 70 72 inch prints for a final artwork size of a whopping 144 by 72 inches or 12 by 6 feet. Even if you don't need a massive size print, a triptych is still an excellent choice for, of print for either your own home or if you're an artist that's looking to sell their work. A triptych gives your photo a beautiful finished and artistic look. These triptych prints can be real attention grabbers and they're perfect for spaces where you need a piece of artwork that really makes a statement. And before I jump in and show you guys how to split up your file and upload it to Artbeat for printing, I wanted to quickly talk about what photos make for good triptychs and what photos don't, because not every photo is going to work well as a triptych. Since you'll be splitting your image into three different pieces, it's best to find an image where you won't be cutting the pieces on a part of the image that's really important. If you choose to do three equal sized pieces, stay away from images where the subject lies on one of the one third marks of the image since it would then be split in half between different photos, between different prints. You can certainly play around with printing different size pieces. For example, putting two sides that are skinnier and one center piece that's larger. But in this video, I'm just gonna be printing out three equal sized pieces. Additionally, look for images that have equal weight on each side of the image. Somewhat symmetrical images work really well and images where the composition isn't too heavily weighted on one side or another are gonna be the best choice. For example, an image like this one here wouldn't print well as a triptych. Notice how the one third lines on the image cross over important details on the trees in the center. The same thing goes with this photo. The Milky Way would be split into two separate pieces, and even if it wasn't, the far right frame isn't really interesting by itself. Instead, an image like this one would print well as a triptych. You can see the subject centered in the middle, and both the left and right sides feel evenly weighted. Additionally, the one third lines don't cut through any element of the photo that's important to the composition. For this particular video, I'm going to be turning this photo into a triptych and ordering it through Artbeat's website. For those of you that may want to do something like this yourself, I'm going to jump into Photoshop and show you exactly how I split my image into three even pieces, then how I upload and order to Artbeat's website. So I've already got my image loaded into Photoshop, which I have right here. You can see I think this is going to make for a really, really nice triptych. I'm going to show you guys exactly how I go about resizing this. So with your image loaded in Photoshop, make sure your background layer is unlocked here. If there's a lock here, just click on it. Then what you're going to want to do, uh, first thing is first, you want to set your Photoshop so that it's in inches uh, because it may be in pixels. So go up here to Photoshop, go to settings, and then you're going to go down to units and rulers. You're going to hit inches. You want to do the ruler in inches. Make sure it's not pixels. Make sure it is inches. It's going to make your life a lot easier here. You can go ahead and hit OK there. Um, and then what you're going to do is you want the ruler to be active. So a lot of you guys, your Photoshop probably looks like this right now. If you hit Command R on a Mac or Control R on a PC, that's going to bring up the ruler. Now you should see the inches of your image. My image, because of the amount of megapixels I used, is about 32 inches. Yours might be less. It might be more. It doesn't really matter because we're going to resize our image right now. When you go to resize this image, make sure you're selected on the photo layer, the background layer. You're going to go down to image. You're going to go to image size. And then we are going to adjust the image size. Now, I like to check the little box here just so to make sure that I don't mess up my math. Um, this particular photo, I think I want to be a 60 by 90, uh, which is going to be 330 by 60 pieces. So if you want it to be a 60 by 90, I need the width to be 90. So I can type 90. The height should snap to about 60. If it's slightly off, just check on this little box here and punch in 60 or whatever the number is going to be. Now, um, you can change the resolution to 150 pixels per inch, and then I want to resample. I want to use the Bicubic Smoother. Um, you can also use Preserve Details, but I think the Bicubic Smoother works a little bit better in my experience for printing. 
And I'm going to go ahead and hit OK here. That's going to take just a second to load out. If you've got an older computer, be patient. It takes a little bit of time to upsize an image. Photoshop has to do a little bit of thinking. Um, but once it is done, you will notice it is loaded out. Now, again, if you have that ruler up, it's Command R on a Mac, Control R on a PC. You should now see that my image is 90 inches by 60 inches. Now all we have to do is cut this into three different pieces so I can send them off to Artbeat's website. It's actually relatively easy to do that. I want to show you guys a little trick that I like to use. So we're going to drag a guide. So if we click on the ruler and drag out, you can see when I drag a guide, I get, uh, it says X and then it shows me the amount of inches. So my crops should be on X is 30 because that'll give me a 30 inch wide piece on the left. And then my second crop should be X 60. That'll give me two 30, 30 and 30. So three 30 width pieces. Problem you'll notice is I can't get it exactly at 30 and it's really important that you have it accurate. So what you're going to do is actually zoom in around the 30 mark. The further you zoom in, the easier it is to be accurate. Now you can see I can get 30.0. And I'm going to do the same thing over here. I'm going to click and drag this out. 60.0 there. Oh, just missed it there. And like I said, very important that you make sure this is accurate. 60.0 just like that. These are going to be the panels in my image. Uh, so I want to look at this and make sure everything checks out that it is okay to crop on these particular lines here. If not, you might want to select a different photo or maybe think about doing uh, different sized pieces. Like I said, skinnier left and right and a bigger one in the middle. Um, but for me, this is looking great. I've got a nice strong subject in the center. I've got two equally weighted side pieces. Um, and I think this will be just perfect. Now to crop this image, what you want to do is grab your crop tool. If you've got any values over here, sometimes it'll default to like having two by three or anything like that. Just hit clear, clear those out. Then you will adjust your crop tool and I want to just crop it right on the guides. Now, if you're noticing like me that it's not snapping, I want it to be super accurate. And unfortunately right now it is not super accurate. And so what you're gonna do is you're gonna go up to view you're going to go down to snap, make sure snap is turned on. It should have a check next to it and then make sure snap to guides is checked. Now, when I drag this over, it should snap perfectly. You can see on the 30 and that'll give you an X or a W 30, meaning that I'm exactly 30 inches over on the frame. Now we're going to hit enter. We're going to let that load out. Um, oh, and you also want to make sure when you crop here, delete crop pixels is checked off. Make sure that's checked off so that you can make some adjustments. You can uh, re-crop the image without it being deleted. So make sure delete crop pixels is checked off. Now, once you have that, you can see this is my left panel here and hit return a couple times, make sure it loads out. Then I'm going to save this. This is everything that needs to be done. Of course, there's still some other things like the um, color space. You want to make sure you're in um, Adobe RGB 1998. But we talked about a little bit of that in a video that we posted a while back. We'll link that video here so you can look at the file preparation um, guidelines. In this video, we just want to focus on how to make a triptych. But if you do need some help with the preparation guidelines for your file, make sure to check out that video. Now, once your photo is looking like this, you're going to want to go ahead and export it. I'm going to go down to file. I'm going to go to save a copy. I'm not going to use export. I'm going to save a copy. I'm going to go format. We're going to go JPEG. And then you can check the box to embed the color profile. Make sure it says Adobe RGB uh, 1998. That's going to give you the absolute best colors possible that you can in a print. Again, we talked about that in another one of the videos that you can check out. Then figure out where you want to save it. I already have a folder for triptych files. I'm going to save it here. And then if you want, you can call this left because this is the left file. You can really name it whatever you want. I like to call it left because then I can be a little more organized. Then you'll hit save. Uh, you want to save it maximum quality and using baseline is totally fine here for the format options. Again, I want to have make sure the mat is off here, but basically these are the settings that you want to use. You can go ahead and hit OK. You can see that's going to take a second to save. may take longer if you've got an older computer. Now, once you're done with that, you can go ahead and do the next crop. Now, when I do the next crop, I want to click and drag from the left side here. This is really important. Don't grab from the corner because we don't want to increase the height vertically. We only want to increase the uh, width horizontally. I'm going to click and drag this over 
all the way to the next line. And it should say for the size that I'm doing, it should say the width is 30. The W is 30, which it does, which is correct. Now I can hit return again, let that load it may take just a second. And once you've done that, you're going to save it the exact same way as you did before. Again, I'm going to save a copy. I'm going to go down JPEG, embed color profile, desktop, it's under triptych files, and we're going to call this center. Then we're going to do this one more time again, drag from right there on the side, and it should say 30 again. And sometimes it might be a little difficult here. You may need to zoom in to get it to say 30. Um, it won't always snap on that very far side, which can kind of be a little bit frustrating. But again, make sure that size is exactly correct in order for the best results. The more you zoom in, the more you can adjust this. Just like that, 30. We're gonna hit enter. It's gonna take just a second to load here. Now we've got the right panel. We're gonna go file, we're gonna go export, we're gonna export as. <clears throat> so now we've got the right panel. We're gonna go file, save a copy. We're gonna go JPEG, we're gonna save it in the same place. And we're gonna call that right. And save maximum quality. Just like that, we've got all our files saved. So next you need to upload your files to Artbeat's website. Now it's really important to note that Artbeat will not cut the image up for you. So you can't just upload one bigger size. That's why we created the three separate variations, the left, the middle, and the right, so that we can send it off to Artbeat. Because again, if I sent them just the one large file and I told them to print it in three pieces, they aren't gonna do that. So you need to make sure that you do all three of those, the left, middle, and the right side, and then upload those. Here on Artbeat's website, I'm just going to click Create Order. I'm going to drag and drop files, select all of those. I'm going to let them upload. That may take a few minutes depending on your internet connection and the size of your files. Uh, for me, the files are relatively small. My internet is relatively fast. So you can see it's uploading pretty quickly. Now, what you want to do, first of all, select the product that you want to get. So for me, I'm going to get a metal print. I'm going to do the white satin. I really like satin because it's kind of like a semi-gloss, which is going to look really nice in the space that I put it in, I think. So we'll click HD Metal White Satin. Now we can order each piece. I'm going to order the left one first. We're going to go down to 30 by 60 in size. For the mount, I think for this one, it's a little bit more expensive, but I'm going to do a flush black. You can certainly do any mount that you want. A regular like natural wood or aluminum mount is going to look totally fine. But I think for my space and my personal preference, I really like this flush black mount for what we're doing here. Then you can go down. You can do additional options if you want to do like a wire hanger, if you want gallery quality, image enhancement, any of that um, you can do down here. And once you're done, you can go ahead and click add to cart. It's going to add that one image to the cart. Then you need to go back up. You can go to where it says upload photo, click on the center photo, scroll down 30 by 60, do the same option. That's really important. Um, especially if you do a flush mount, make sure you do a flush mount on all three or it's going to look kind of weird in the end. Make sure you choose the same mount, this, all the same options here. You're going to click add to cart. And then we can go back to upload photo, grab our one last one here. And we're gonna make sure we do 30 by 60. And we'll go down, we're gonna do flush black, add to cart. Just like that, we can go ahead and order that. This is a big print um, and it, I'm really excited for how it's gonna look. So I'm gonna finish up this video. I'm gonna place this order and then we're gonna pick this video back up when the print arrives. I'm gonna show you what it looks like. I'm really excited to see it. So uh, without further ado, I'm gonna go ahead and finish this order and I will show you guys once I get it all hung up in my house here. This print looks amazing. I ended up putting it up in my living room. You can see it's just a huge print. Loved that satin finish. This is in a room with a lot of windows and you can see there's 
basically no glare on the print. The attention to detail in this print and just the amount of detail that it shows was just fantastic. I love looking at it up close. Additionally, I'm glad that I ordered the flush mount. That black flush mount I think looks fantastic on a triptych. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you have questions about the process, please don't hesitate to reach out to support. Thank you guys so much. We'll see you in the next one.